I don't eat meat because I think it is wrong to kill animals for food. However, I have not always held that belief, and I'm a realist. I know that most people in Western countries do eat meat, and usually don't think too much about the underlying ethics. If you're listening and you're an ardent meat eater, then there are probably no combination of words that I can string together in order to change your mind, so I'm not going to even try. Maybe it's best for you to leave a droll comment below such as, Hi, I'm a member of PETA. People eating tasty animals. Click the dislike button, then go and watch a different video. This video will probably not interest you. Or you can continue listening and try to broaden your mind and at least accept that there are varying views on the ethics of killing animals. When I was a boy, like many other boys in Australia, my parents fed me meat. For a long time, say about 25 years, I thought the idea of not eating meat was silly. Why would somebody deprive themselves of something so essential? At least, that's what I was led to believe. It wasn't until I lived in Japan that I started questioning the practice. See the link to my other video below, why I became a vegetarian, for a more detailed explanation. So why do most people in the Western world eat meat? Some argue that it's important for one's health. I'm sure there are many healthy meat eaters out there living perfectly healthy lives, but there are also lots of healthy vegetarians as well, I being one of them. I haven't eaten meat, at least not frequently, since 2005. I'm as fit, if not fitter, than most of my peers. That said, I would have to admit that this is not necessarily due to my vegetarianism. Probably if I still ate meat, I would still be quite a healthy guy due to my lifestyle choices. I tend to walk and exercise a lot, I don't smoke, I rarely drink, I eat healthily, etc. The fact that there are both healthy and unhealthy meat eaters, and vegetarians, shows us that the health argument should not be used with regard to at least the ethics of eating meat. Just as an aside, there has been lots of research done of late regarding the negative effects of red meat and processed meat on the human body. However, I don't believe this to be an ethical consideration, so I'm not going to pursue it any further in this recording. If you do wish to find out more, however, please feel free to check out the links below. Just to be clear, I'm not actually against people eating meat. I think the action of eating meat is not immoral, per se. If you found a dead animal out in the bush that had died of natural causes, and you decide to eat that animal, I have no moral argument against that. Similarly, if there was some new method that allows meat to be taken from an animal without killing or harming it, then I would probably have no qualms with that either. But that's living in the world of fantasy. There actually has been lots of research of late of how to grow meat in the lab. Lab-grown meat does not require an actual animal to be fed, bred, and slaughtered. The meat, however, is grown from actual animal cells, and therefore is real meat. It's not fake. Real muscle tissue is grown. If this is what the average Australian was eating, I wouldn't even bother making this video. Sometimes people bring up the argument of survival. That is, if a person was lost in the woods and they had no other source of food apart from killing an animal, then they simply must kill that animal in order to survive. I agree. If I had no other source of food, I would do the same. But that's such an edge case that it's not really a valid argument for or against killing animals in order to eat them. The average person will never find themselves in such a situation. Actually, the average person living in a Western society has access to a whole range of cheap, nutritious, non-meat foods. I bought a can of chickpeas the other day for 73 cents. An equivalent amount of steak costs about $12, so that's like at least 15 times the cost. And that leads me on to my next point, the environmental cost. The fact that meat is 10 to 15 times more expensive than many vegetables means that the amount of resources that goes into producing it is intense. And that is an ethical issue, in that a diet high in meat, eggs and dairy has a greater impact on the environment than one that doesn't. To be fair, different types of meat do affect the environment differently. The environmental cost of producing chicken is a lot less than that of producing lamb. It should be noted that hurting the environment equates to hurting other people. Pollution potentially hurts everyone. At the very least, the average Westerner should reduce their intake of meat, not just for their own health, but for the health of the planet as well. Furthermore, the average person would benefit from increasing their intake of fruit and vegetables. That's not controversial. Almost all nutritionists would agree with me. 
Some people might argue about the legality of meat, that is, it is legal to eat chicken, so therefore it is not immoral. But history teaches us that laws don't necessarily equate to moral behaviour. Yes, laws are based on morality, but when the underlying moral views are wrong, then obviously the laws themselves are not moral. Think of laws that banned women or black people from voting. Laws that allowed white people to enslave black people. Laws that banned interracial marriage, and so on. You could probably come up with hundreds of them. So no, law is not a justification to continue an immoral practice. So back to my original question. Why do people eat meat? I think there are two reasons. One minor, and one major. The minor reason is taste. People enjoy eating meat. I must admit, when I used to eat a steak sandwich, or a hamburger, or a piece of fried chicken, I found it quite enjoyable. Meat can certainly taste nice. But is that a valid reason to slaughter an animal? I would say no, it's not. A cow is a living, breathing, intelligent creature. I don't mean that a cow writes poetry, but it certainly shows signs of intelligence. A mother cow will defend its young just like any human mother would do. If I try to attack an animal, say a dog, with a hammer, it will certainly run away or get into a defensive stance. It does not want to die, just like the average human does not want to die. At the very least, it wants to continue living. For us to pack a bunch of cows onto a crowded transport truck, making them stand in their own filth, and then send them up a darkened corridor at the abattoir where a man places a captive bolt pistol on their forehead, pulls the trigger, and penetrates the animal's brain with a piece of steel, rendering it unconscious. For those unlucky enough to have been labelled as halal, the killing process is a lot crueler. According to Islamic law, animals must be alive and healthy at the time of slaughter. The animal is killed through a cut to the jugular vein, carotid artery, and windpipe, and all blood must be drained from the carcass. It causes much unnecessary suffering. But the biggest reason why people continue eating meat, despite the suffering involved, is custom. That is, most of us are raised eating meat being taught that it's okay to do so. Occasionally children may question the practice, but we typically tell them that we have to do it in order to stay fit and healthy, and that the animals live good lives out on the farm. We try to give a storybook account of the meat industry. Unfortunately, the reality is quite the opposite. Cruelty is commonplace in the meat industry. I think that the average person knows this, but for some reason they continue eating meat. People's behaviours tend to run counter to their beliefs. I don't think the average person wants to be intentionally cruel to an animal, and I doubt many people would actually want to kill an animal themselves. However, they are happy to munch down on a chicken leg without a moment's thought. This paradoxical behaviour can be described using the psychological term cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is used to describe the uneasy feelings that people suffer when their beliefs don't align with their actions. People have an inner need to avoid disharmony caused by conflicting beliefs. So either they have to change their actions, or justify what they are doing. The latter is probably far more common. When people eat meat, they rationally know that it came from a slaughtered animal. But instead of quitting meat, they instead justify it by convincing themselves that it is essential for health. Or they might criticise those that choose not to eat meat by labelling them a weirdo or a bleeding heart lefty. Smokers will often justify their smoking habit by saying things such as, I could be killed by any number of things. A plane could fall out of the sky and smash into me, so why not enjoy myself now by having a little cigarette? Or, the negative health effects of smoking have been overstated. My grandmother lived to 96 and she smoked every day. By using such justifications, the smoker can continue their unhealthy behaviour without having feelings of dissonance. I suffered from cognitive dissonance back when I was eating meat. I used to come up with every justification under the sun. But I think the whole time I knew that killing animals in order to eat them was not right. Finally, I came to my senses in Japan and stopped eating meat. It was actually a great weight off my shoulders. No more did I have to justify my cruel habit. Of course, there are lots of other things in life that result in the destruction of animal habitat. Even vegetable production involves the loss of some animal life. 
However, we can only do our best to identify these issues and minimise the harm done wherever possible. I'm not calling for a vegan society, not by a long shot, but we have to be able to admit where cruelty exists in our lives and adjust our actions accordingly. At the very least, eating less meat is a good start. It's good for your health, it's good for the environment, and it's good for the animals. Why would somebody choose not to do so? It's actually a very easy way to live a more ethical life. So I'll ask you one question. Why not start today?